two RWB build. Nakai worked all day yesterday and flew yesterday. They let him sleep in a little bit. It's 9.30 now, so we're gonna go ahead and head over to Titan Motorsports. And the lens is about to fog up because we just walked outside of the Florida. I left the hamburger in the car from yesterday that I was gonna save. Oh my God. We're just hoping if it doesn't smell. Yeah. It should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chris, you want to tell us what just happened? Um, no. We were in 7-Eleven, and there was a weird crowd of people around the Red Bull container, and uh, noticed they had Red Bull shirts on, so I went and supported the brand. Got a Red Bull to support the brand, what up? Gives you wings, I heard. And I went to go pay for mine, and the guy walks up and he's like, I got you, like, who are you? Why you, why you got me? He's like, I got you, and you get a free one. I was like, oh, okay. So he paid for my Red Bull, gave me a free one, and paid for my saltines. And uh, I don't know what just happened, to be honest with you. They said I'm the winner. So reality is Chris just got hit on by a guy and got all the stuff paid for him. Yeah, guess what part's not going in the fog? <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I'll split it with you. The Oreo monster? Yeah, no. tear it apart. Go baby, in. go! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Crap, and they waited. That means they saw it. <laughs> Damn it! Charge it like yeah, since I got it. So, somewhere along the lines, right here, we lost a lot of the footage from the behind the scenes uh, on this second build day, but day or vlog three. So, what I'm gonna do basically is fill in for you guys using some more vlog footage here and kind of let you guys in on some of the, some of the, some of the, some of the. Give it away. Some of the shots that we did that we don't have footage to show you guys how we made them i'm gonna go ahead and tell you here on how we got those shots why we got some of those shots and to give you guys a little bit more behind the scenes info on some of that day so a lot of you guys noticed the naming of the car fighting night the title of the video was rwb orlando fighting night a lot of you guys noticed that in the interview it was translated to battle night <laughs> Well, that was a little bit of thing that we had difficulties with throughout the entire shoot. Sometimes it translates to fighting night, sometimes it translates to the battle night. It's a couple different things how it can be interpreted. That's how some of the translation worked out, and that's what the owner wanted. So at the end of the day, it was called fighting night. So Wes went and printed within Titan, they have a little print shop. He went and printed the name Kai Kishi or Koi Kishi, however you want to pronounce it. He wound up having to print it multiple times because we got really confused with how it was spelt and what was the right meaning and all that. Actually, hold on here. Actually, you have right here uh, one of the misspells. If you guys can see, this one is Koi Kishi, or this, I think this is how it's actually spelt, or this is how it's actually translated. And on the side of the card, it actually says Kai Kishi, or it's spelled differently, it's K E I. You'll see, but we wound up having to do this scene about two or three times. The next thing I want to talk about is a lot of you guys noticed the sliding shot across the floor of the wrench. Um, now in the film here, I'll play a little piece right here what the actual shot is. 
So in that shot, you see Nakai pointing or looking for a tool. Joe then slides the tool to Nakai. Nakai picks up the tool. We see the tool's point of view as it's sliding. Nakai picks up the tool and goes back to work. In the end, that took all of about three seconds of actual video documentary footage in the final film. But a lot more went into that shot than you guys might have seen in that three seconds. So we have footage, or we don't know where that footage went, but we had footage of us showing us how we made that shot. I'm gonna bring it down for you guys right here. Though. I'll throw up a little picture right here. Is we took the Sony a7S II uh, and my 16 to 35 lens, which now is a injured a little bit, it's over there, it's a little injured. Uh, and we took a ton of gaff tape. Gaff tape is basically tape that you'll see a lot of on a lot of film sets or uh, on floors where they try to cover cables up. It's basically tape that comes in all different colors, sizes, those are multicolored. This is just thicker gaff tape. Black gaff tape is what it's, you'll normally see, mostly see. And it's what we used to tape the Sony and the 16 35 millimeter lens to a piece of cardboard. We found out by playing around that a piece of cardboard shoved across the wood floor that was covered in fiberglass dust would slide very smooth and very easily. And with a shutter of about 125 or 125th or 160th, I believe we wound up going with, uh, made for a lot of jittery motion. So it would be as if some piece of or, or the tool or some item was being slid across the floor in, in a kind of drastic motion. Ready? Cool. Thanks, Makai. Mm -hmm. Now, this shot was kind of inspired to me by uh, some other RDB films. Brett May, I'll throw up a clip right here. In Brett May's film, you guys saw right there, he put on a GoPro, I'm assuming, onto a spray can, and we kind of got this POV shot with Nakai. This was honestly one of my favorite shots in the film, and it was maybe about three seconds of actual footage, but because of what we thought about and the work that went into it, and creating the shot itself, I think it really stood out. It was just this little three second, five second, however long it was, piece that made our film a little bit different and made it stand out from the other RWB films that are out there right now, at least I believe. Me and Anthony are running up the questions that we're going to be asking Wes, Nakai, and of course Joe and his father. Um, we're getting all those together before time, so we're not fiddling around last minute trying to figure out what we need to ask them uh, when we're about to film them, because this whole weekend and then this whole build is gonna be very tight and quick, everything moves very fast, so definitely it's best to be prepared as much as we can before time. Are they not a scar? Is that good? Can no. I add that? No. Can I use that? No. Chris, use that. I'm gonna make a compilation of all the clips you said, no, don't use that, and use that. <laughs> So we're asking them a bunch of stuff from serious questions to uh, personal things. If we can make somebody cry, that'd be great. We can probably just punch Kelly and make him cry. Feel the liner. It's <laughs> real nice. What a dick. <laughs> what a dick. You're a dick. When you're editing this, I hope you know you're a dick. All right, so the tie rod situation. This was an ongoing process throughout day uh, day two of the build, I believe, and day three of the build, where we just hit a wall, basically, and Nakai couldn't get this tie rod off the damn car. There was a rusty bolt underneath the car, which we tried to light up uh, with fire, with a torch. We tried to light it up to get it to get molten hot and then kind of get it off that way. That didn't work. WD-40 didn't work. Kicking it, kicking it a thousand times didn't work. Hitting with a hammer wouldn't work. And eventually, Nakai wound up just accidentally breaking the entire tie rod. So, as in the documentary you guys saw, Wes and his team at Titan Motorsports came in the next morning and they welded up a sleeve. They welded up the uh, section of tie rod that had broke and just made pretty much a brand new tie rod. But this was a very stressful situation. There was everyone around Nakai trying to figure out what they could do to help him getting different pliers. At one point, even sharpening one of the pliers that they had to try to get a better grip on it uh, to make the teeth a little bit stronger and nothing would really work. So like I said, it wound up breaking and they pretty much just had to make a new one the next day. That's something that you don't really see when you see the car. You think, okay, he just came and built it. No, he ran into issues. It wasn't a perfect build and we think we saw that or showed you guys that in the documentary. real quick uh, when you guys just saw that clip did you see Nakai jump on the car just just go ahead and leap on the car put a step put a foot on it put his leg on the car and to put the banner on that when I first saw it I laughed while I was filming just seeing that and that was just crazy to see it obviously didn't did no damage and he just nothing really phases this guy So 
shots you just saw, those are from the Sony FS7. We shot those in super slow motion with the FS7 that we rented. And we think just shots like those really help the film stand apart from the rest because we went the extra mile, we rented the extra camera, we fit that into the budget of course. You can see the flickering on the screen because of the refresh rate or the, the lights and things some just don't, things sometimes just don't match up that well and uh, that's just something we had to deal with at the time and we used the footage because it just looked too good to pass up just because of the flickering lights. This day of the build was actually Joe's birthday, his actual birthday. His mom and his family brought in cupcakes that all read out RWB. They had gumballs, the mint color of the car. They had M&Ms, the mint color of the car. Uh, Joe had the mint tumbler, the Yeti, Yeti tumbler that you guys saw, that was super cool. Uh, and it was kind of interesting to kind of see his friends and family there celebrating his birthday during the build. That was actually really neat. And in, of course, in the meantime, Nakai San's in the background sawing up stuff. You can barely hear them singing happy birthday over him sawing, which we thought was pretty funny. So it's 9.05 and we're still at Titan Motorsports. Sports. Uh, having some trouble with some bolts on the car. Uh, but now we got pizza, so everything's okay. Oh, the pizza guy. Shout out to the pizza guy. Justin, wherever you are, shout out to you. <laughs> Came in clutch with the pizza. It's pretty much where that second day ended. The second build day, but the third day that we were down there in Orlando, that's pretty much where that ended. We ended with the pizza guy coming in, bringing us pizza, who actually knew nakai -san, which was pretty cool. nakai -san breaking the bolt and us planning for the next morning on what we're gonna do, how we're gonna be able to get the next shots, what's gonna have to happen to get this bolt fixed, and how we're gonna get to the show and the meet the next day, which you guys will see in tomorrow's or the next day's vlog whenever that comes out. So yeah, hopefully using this little, these little interjections here in this vlog helped fill in kind of the blanks where you guys couldn't really see or the footage that we can't find. We'd have no clue where the hell it went. But hopefully I was able to kind of fill in and answer some questions for you guys in this little segment on how we got some of the shots and why we got some of the shots. If you guys like stuff like that, let me know in a comment down below and we'll, I'll do more explanation stuff like this where I talk about what we used, why we used it, how we used it uh, to kind of give you guys more of a, more than just a behind the scenes vlog to give you guys an insight onto how maybe you can create some shots to make your film stand apart or if you're not even into this stuff, maybe you're just like watching me talk or seeing some cool footage. Make sure you guys like this video so we know to make more vlogs, we know to make more content like this if you're enjoying them. If you haven't checked out the documentary already, the film, the 20 minute film, make sure to full go ahead at the end of this video, I'll link to the full video and the previous vlog if you guys haven't seen that, make sure to check that out. That's about it guys, thank you so so much for watching these vlogs, thank you for watching the documentary, checking out the channel, and to all you new subscribers, thank you guys so much, I noticed a nice little influx after the documentary dropped of new subscribers. I talk really fast, get used to it, <laughs> I'll try to fix that. Thank you guys for watching, I will see you all in the next one. Thumbs up this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. I said that like six times, <laughs> peace.